All right, this is the lecture on uncertainty. So remember from last time, we started with estimating this utility model, which we write as beta prime dex. This is our observable utility, and this error term with the unobservable. And this beta prime x is really just a matrix notation of writing out this same thing here, a sum product of different beta coefficients and the x attributes. And we want to understand what are these beta coefficients. So we estimate this using maximum likelihood estimation, uh, which we rewrote here in negative null form as minimizing the negative log likelihood. And this whole process results in point estimates of our beta vector. So we get an estimate, that's what this little hat here means, an estimate of the, of the vector of, of beta parameters. But these are not precisely known. So in this lecture, we're going to start figuring out how we can estimate the error around these point estimates. So a general concept to keep in mind is that the certainty of this beta vector is inversely related to the curvature of the log likelihood function. Okay, what does all this mean? Well, let's look at the comparison between this plot on the left and the plot on the right. On the left, the variation here in the log likelihood term is pretty wide. Right? We have a very large variance, and on the right, it's much more narrow. So conceptually, if you move away from this parameter beta by just a little bit to the right or left, well, you're not going to get much change in the log likelihood. Just think about when we go from this line here to this line, the log likelihood only drops a tiny bit. And so you could be over here or you could be over here, and any of these points of beta could still produce the same log likelihood. Over on the right plot, that's not the case. As soon as you move away from this, this line here where the best estimate of beta is, well, you very quickly reduce the likelihood. And so the difference here is on the left, when you have a much greater variance in the log likelihood, well, that means you're less certain about beta. And the opposite is true on the right. You have a very narrow band around the best estimate of beta. And so you have very little variance in the likelihood function, which means you're much more certain about this beta coefficient. So there's an inverse relationship between the coefficient beta and the curvature of the log likelihood function. And remember, the curvature of a function is related to its second derivative. So in this case, the covariance of this beta term is related to the Hessian of the log likelihood function. Remember, the Hessian is the matrix of second derivatives. So this inner term inside this bracket is just this Hessian matrix that comes out of our estimation procedure. And then we take the negative inverse of it to get our covariance. And so this results in a matrix of lots of variance terms. So visually, let's just imagine we only have two betas, beta 1 and beta 2. Well, these sigma terms are going to describe the size of these rings. If we're looking down at an overhead plot of this, this is kind of like looking at like a topographical map, where our best estimate of, of our vector beta is this point here, um, beta 1 and beta 2. But the true parameters could be somewhere else in this space. And the broader this space is, the less certain we are that this point is the optimal point. Oftentimes, when we report our results, we'll just report the sigma terms that come off the diagonal of this covariance matrix. So you'll see tables like this where you have your estimates of your different coefficients for beta and their standard error, which is the square root of each of these terms along the diagonal. We'll use these terms to report uncertainty about beta. So imagine that each of these beta terms is really a distribution of possible terms for beta. And beta hat is just the mean of this distribution. This is our best guess of what the true beta is. If we add one sigma to either side of this beta term, well, that captures 68% of this distribution of possible betas. And if we add another sigma term on either side, that captures 95% of this probability of possible different betas. As a convention, we usually present 95% confidence intervals as approximations uh, where we take beta hat and we subtract two sigmas to the left and two sigmas to the right. So these bands here on the outer edges would give us a 95% confidence interval about what the true parameter of beta is. So for practice question one, let's say we estimated a model. Our beta coefficients are beta 1 is negative 0.4, 
beta 2 is 0.5, and this is the Hessian matrix, the matrix of second derivatives that result from our estimation. Part A, use the Hessian to compute the standard errors for beta hat. And part B, use the standard errors to compute a 95% confidence interval around beta hat. For some hints, the covariance matrix, remember, is computed as the negative inverse of the Hessian. And in R, you can compute this uh, by first using the matrix function to construct a matrix in R and then use the solve function to compute the inverse of a matrix. And finally, you can use the diag function to get the numbers along the diagonal of a matrix. Okay, so we've covered one approach for uh, handling uncertainty, but we can also use simulation. Remember that beta hat is just our best guess estimate, and the sigma term is helping us understand how certain we are of that estimate. Negative 2 sigma to positive 2 sigma represents a 95% confidence interval around beta. Another way we can compute this confidence interval is by taking sample draws of our coefficient to simulate the uncertainty. So, for example, let's say we have a coefficient of 0.5 and sigma is 0.1. Well, we can draw samples from a normal distribution of these parameters using the R norm function. R norm stands for random normal. The first input is how many draws you want to take, and so in this case I'm drawing 10,000 different values. The second input is the mean coefficient, and the third input is the standard deviation. So this object draws now is a object of 10,000 different numbers that represent different possible values of beta. And if we were to plot a histogram of all these different values, it would look close to a normal distribution. And we can use all these draws to compute different statistics. For example, if we take the mean of the draws, we get 0.499. Well, that looks pretty close to 0.5. Likewise, if we compute the standard deviation of draws using SD, it's 0.1001. And that's pretty close to the sigma value. We can also use them to estimate a confidence interval. Remember that a 95% confidence interval can be directly computed by taking the mean coefficient plus or minus two times the standard deviation. So here I've directly computed that and it's between 0.3 to 0.7. But using my draws, I can compute this by just looking at the quantiles of the draws. So here I've said, give me the quantiles from 0.025 all the way up to 0.975. That represents all the values between these four sigmas. And I got 0.3 and about 0.7. So it's pretty close to the direct calculation. So we can use these random draws to compute statistics that are useful for us. And we're going to use the same concept to compute uncertainty around willingness to pay and our market share predictions. So I just showed you how to take a bunch of draws from a single distribution with only one mean and one standard deviation. But remember that our parameters beta is a vector of parameters that has this mean of vector and a covariance matrix. And previously I showed you that a, this covariance matrix is computed from the Hessian. Specifically, it's the negative inverse of the Hessian at the solution. So this represents a multivariate normal distribution. So to take draws of a multivariate normal, we have to use a slightly different function in R. So first, we have to load the library mass, which contains the function we're going to use. And here I've just populated an example where I have three different attributes for beta. So there's three ve values in my beta vector. And let's say I estimated a model and it gave me this Hessian. Well, I compute this covariance matrix by taking the negative inverse of the Hessian. And in R, they use the solve function to invert a matrix. And then I can take 10,000 draws from that multivariate distribution by using the MVR norm function. MVR norm comes from the mass library, and it takes a vector of means and a covariance matrix. If I were to look at the first six rows of my draws, I can see that for each of these attributes, I've got a bunch of different possible values, right? So for price, my mean estimate is negative 0.7, and you can see that the draws for price are all just around that value. And the same is true for MPG and ELEC. Once we have all those draws, we can then use them to calculate some summary statistics, like take the mean or use the quantile function to pull off the 
upper and lower bounds of a confidence interval. So if you look at these results, you'll see that the mean of the draws is about negative 0.7, which was the estimate that uh, we had for the, that beta coefficient. Um, and the upper and lower bounds reflect a 95% confidence interval of that estimate. All right, so for our second practice question, uh, let's suppose that we estimated the following utility model for preferences for cars. And we got the following results of these coefficient estimates and this Hessian. Let's use both of those values to generate 10,000 draws of the model coefficients. Uh, and then we're going to use those draws to compute the mean and a 95% confidence interval of each parameter estimate. 